So this is how to make your Hornby Gresley Teaks even better. If you're new to the channel or you haven't already, don't forget to smash that subscribe button, click on the bell icon, select all, and you'll be notified every time we upload new content. So here we are on the bench and in front of me we have a standard modern railroad Gresley Teak coach. Now this coach came out of the Master of the Glen set. I'm going to work on those three coaches today. So previously I did a video, it's been very successful, where I actually used a very cheap airbrush and some of this. This is the Citadel colour range and it's a Seraphine Serpia shade. It's very watery, it's more of a wash than anything else. And I used a very cheap airbrush, dismantled them sprayed them a couple of coats and just really dulled down the color and uh, one of those coaches is here it gave it a far more realistic look than that of the railroad coach in fact if i get a main range this is the premium range grizzly teak and put it there if you put them the three together that's far more dulled down i wouldn't say it's exactly like this it's certainly closer than this this is just so light but that is a main range grizzly teak and they're not cheap getting back to this this is one of the ones that i sprayed great i know a lot of people have done it and a lot of people have uh, said that was great it, it worked really well but i had one comment it addressed the situation which is absolutely correct that some of the newer hornby railroad grizzly teaks actually have the glazing stuck to the inside of the actual shell that's absolutely correct and i can totally agree with this because i've actually been through my collection some of the ones i haven't actually done like similar to this lo and behold here's one i've actually done already the glazing is actually stuck to the interior it is very much stuck to the interior but as you can see i've actually weathered that one up and changed the color which is exactly what we're going to do today it's a lot easier than you might actually think that is what we're going to do today unfortunately the glazing on these does actually come out in order to prove my point so that if you have got any with the glazing stuck inside i am not going to take the glazing out of this when we do it this is one i did a couple of days ago you can see far darker and i'll just bring the ordinary railroad in it's far darker it's actually come out incredibly well way better than i thought it would so good that i actually did do it on a set of the railroad or the old lnr clevistry coaches uh, i actually picked up two out of the boxes and did exactly the same thing with those ones as well and it, it, it came out really 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 well and just to give an idea of how close they are to sort of main range stuff there is one of hornby's uh, most recent six wheel coaches it's not a huge distance off they're not likely to be exactly the same shade but they are very close you could easily put them together if you really wanted to going to the main range as you can see there i swing this round so that we've got they are far more close i would actually be happy to run those together with each other now so they are far more realistic than railroad color is and i'm going to show you how i've done it and it is actually really quite quick and to give you an idea of just how quick it is i did both these coaches i think it was in two hours i did the pair of them first thing as always if you're in this situation just pull those bogies off I'm not going to take the chassis off on this one purely because of the fact that the glazing is not stuck into this i'm not going to weather the roof today on this i'm just going to do the sides and the ends so that you can see exactly how to do it with the glazing stuck in so the first thing we need is this this is a citadel color shade seraphin serpia games workshop there you are it is a games workshop paint or wash and we want a uh, i haven't gone for a really great brush but what i've done is i've actually gone for a really cheap brush but i've gone for a very soft brush later on in the video we're going to need this this is humbrol clear this is amazing stuff it's really 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 good stuff and you don't need an awful lot of that either and something i'm just going to keep handy is these cotton bud sticks or q-chips depending where you're coming from if you do make a mistake and it ends up all in the glaze and if you just go like that straight away it just soaks it straight up and it's gone i've got one of them hand just in case it's required so the beauty with this technique is there's absolutely no priming or anything like that required it's just a case of shaking the bottle up make sure the pigment is moved around inside and open it up and not spill it anywhere these lids are great on on these games workshop bottles because they've got this little bit here where you can just dab the brush on and it will just pour straight in so there's no need to transfer it onto anything else so i've got this brush nice and soft at the moment i'm just gonna i'm just gonna take some of the wash i'm gonna get it in to the brush i'm gonna soak that brush up so that all of the hair on it is well covered in this wash and you don't need to plaster this stuff on i don't want tons on the brush certainly not for this first coat so there we go on the brush 
I'm just going to run in. You don't have to worry about getting brush strokes perfect and things like that. You can run it straight over the gaps where these small windows are here. And then you're just going to run it down. And you can see it's gathering in places. Don't worry about that. Because as soon as you put the brush onto those bits where it's gathered, the brush will naturally soak it all up. So straight in there. I'm just getting it straight on not worrying too much about it like I say if you see it gathering just drop the brush in and don't worry about missing tiny little areas because you're going to be doing more than one coat I would imagine at least so in fact when I did this the other evening I was very bored so I'm just going to get all of these what I would call easy areas first there's no need to worry about this glazing honestly it, I, I, I did think when the comment was made I thought do you know what you've got a point there it could be a complete nightmare if you were trying to do this with an airbrush and I totally agreed so I took up a challenge basically and I've took up challenges before with Aiden when he said well, can you do it a different way so I'm try I tried and it does work so at the expense of my railroad coaches I'm going to prove it and I hope this does help many of you who want to try and do this or want to get rid of that railroad bright colour because I've got to say when I was younger it looked fine but now I'm older it just doesn't look right and I know it doesn't look right like I said I'm not being overly careful when I'm putting this on because it will gather in places now one of the things to note is this stuff goes tacky quite quickly it is an acrylic it will it does dry off really very quickly and I'm not worried if it does gather in certain places because it actually adds to shading so that is just one side covered and you probably can't see much of a difference but there is a difference um, I'm recording it in 4k on purpose to try and emphasize when these differences appear so I'm going to move on to one of the ends now because it's a wash it doesn't seem to affect the roof too much you can accidentally go onto the roof and if you think oh I've gone too far just use the cotton bud don't rub it just let the cotton bud rest on it and it'll just soak it straight up I haven't had that problem yet so far to be honest but I have been weathering some of the roofs on mine just using some powders so same as the other side I'm just gonna go for the easy areas first and get plenty in there and you might be wondering about inside the window frames and things like that but I'm gonna get to that in a moment because I did find it was actually quite easy if you had a little bit of overspill in these areas here you can just you're not going to see a lot of difference this first coat if you just do that run it along it basically makes a scratch coat just gives it something for the next coat to to get a hold of and in some areas you can see that it's making a huge difference already but, and then in others you feel like there's not an awful lot happening but it is it is all happening it's just uh, it's a little process and it doesn't take very long you can see I've sort of plastered it on that end piece there but I'm going to come back to that you see the brush as I, as I let the brush touch those areas where it's you would say maybe flooded it just picks that picks up the wash and you can use it somewhere else same again it's just picked it up again so all it's doing at the moment is giving us a scratch coat to work on I'm gonna get in all these gaps here pick up some of that excess and I can use it again in another spot if you wonder what the bells are in the background it's not Father Christmas it is Candy the cat. He's sitting in the background 
watching eagerly to see what I am doing. So that's that side, just do this end here. Running it along the top a little bit and straight down the sides, not too worried about the gathering because the ends would have been dirty anyway. With it being a wash, the brush will help just pick up any excess. Now, that side's already gone tacky. So the opposite side, the one that I did first, it's already gone tacky. So this just turned into a process the other evening when I was trying this out and I just worked around it a few times. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna do this one section for the minute and then see if there's a noticeable difference that you can pick up on between the two two halves of the coach. Now I can tell you if you would have just put this on by brush yeah you're going to get a reasonably nice finish but it's not going to have any sort of gloss or satin tinge to it. Um, it will go quite matte very quickly and um, which is why I've got the Humbrol clear for when it's uh, dried off. So let's have a look on the camera there. I don't know if it's entirely sure, but you can see that that shade, although it's darker now anyway, it's not as dark as this area here. Now, what I like about doing it with a brush now, and this, this is what I discovered when I took up this little challenge to see if it was possible to do it with the glazing in, is the actual yellow lining uh, doesn't fade away. In, in like, uh, like with the spray. The spray is a good one, I like it, I've done it, it's got a lot of coaches I'm not going to get rid of them and uh, they give it a much more dirty feel if I'm absolutely honest you get a bit more pronounced yellow lining or gold lining if that's what it's meant to be still left on the coach at the end of all of this it's still there so I've made a point when I've been doing all of these different coaches because I have been working my way slowly through all of these uh, railroad teaks because we have absolutely loads of them, we picked them up over the years. But you can see there, that side's already starting to uh, come down quite a bit. In fact, I'm just gonna put the brush there. Let's take a look. Already, that is far closer to being the color uh, that we we're looking for this is an untouched much older coach but you can see there bring that round nowhere near that is so much closer already already with just a scratch coat and a single coat it's suddenly so much more closer to being like those main range coach colors so all i'm going to do is repeat this process a second time and then after I've done it this second time I'm going to take a look and see whether I want to go any darker or whether I want to leave it that way because I've made it I've, I've tried to get as much variation between the coaches as possible so that there's no two rakes the same in fact that way I can mix them up and uh put different shaded ones between because they would never have all been the same shade they, they, they would have been some that were really dirty there would have been some that were really clean they might have just been out shopped from the works you know they, they, they would have variated quite a lot but I don't believe any of them would have been as light as those railroad colors that is effectively the plastic that we're seeing on the railroad ones it's not a paint job Now, like I said before, you could just choose to do this wash and leave it like that. You will end up with a bit of a matte finish to it. Or we could go one step further like I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna use a Humbrol Clear. And you could also do what I am gonna do with this one. So I'm gonna use some other washes just to make certain areas of the coach more pronounced, a bit more dirty. Uh, so you can really see all of the shut lines and things like that. Um, you don't have to do that. You could just go straight for this really clean, slightly darker finish 
put some Humber all clear on and see there how the brush just takes up all that excess no need for anything else the brush just soaks it up and then you can apply it to different areas so I'm just gonna now we've got that scratch coat by the windows it's just taken to there it's not a huge deal this you see the glazing is very much still in we've had no problems so far it is actually really quite easy to do with the glazing in I'm actually really grateful to the person who brought that comment up because it gave me the opportunity to find a solution to try it a different way and see if the same principle with the same wash could give you the same results or even better and in my eyes I actually think that these have come out far more better than the original way I did it with with the airbrush although like I said I would still do it again with the airbrush it just depends how dark I want to go so we're back around to side one again and it has gone very much darker wait it's a lot darker than it was I'm just gonna bring in the six wheel coach and have a look there's our six wheel coach and there's a new railroad teak it's much darker as you can see there it's not quite as dark as that I think I'm gonna go through a another coat and I think that'll be the last coat on this coach so for me it's it, it's all it is it's a little bit of make the decision as I'm doing it remember as things dry they get darker anyway So at the moment I am kind of liking that shade. It does look like I might have caught the brush in two locations. So I am going to I'm gonna get the Q-tip here and I'm just gonna see if I have or haven't. It's rubbed it away. So as you can see, it's starting to go off on this side here in places. You can just see little areas which are still damp. So all I'm going to do now is I'm going to put that to one side. I'm just going to leave it. This stuff goes off really quite quickly. So when that's dried, which will only be like a second for yourselves, um, when that's dried, come back and I'm going to do my bit with the dark washes and things just to emphasize some of the areas. In the meantime, while that's drying, I'm going to do two more coaches. So I'll be back in a moment. So I've actually only done one. I've left one on purpose. I'll do that at a later date. Um, I've left one on purpose looking totally a standard because I want to give the feel of what's been going on. So I've done a whole other coach. This is the coach that you saw me do at the beginning. And as you can see, it's dry. You'd be lucky if 20 minutes have gone past, but it's dry. Um, it's definitely toned down. If I bring the other coach in, you can see that it's definitely toned down. I haven't gone as dark this time, but you'll see why. There, yeah, it's definitely toned down. It looks completely different. So, next stage, for me anyway. Now you could just cover this in Humbrol Clear or leave it as it is right now, and that would be it over and done with, you know. But the other night I, I had a little bit of a play with some Umbral black wash that's all I was using and that's what I'm going to do now so for this like I say I am using the Humbral black wash you could use the smoke one there's, there's numbers of washes out there um, but that's what I'm using right now and that is an enamel wash and I'm using a Humbral 00 detail brush now I, I would advise if you're going to do this get a really fine brush and um, this isn't incredibly fine but it is fine enough and it, it does exactly what I want it to do so this is the one I'm going to use. I want to try my best to make sure you can see as much as you can on camera. Um, so all I'm going to do is 
get some of the wash onto my brush. I don't want tons of it on, just wants to be a thin bit. And I am just doing the uh, some of the shot lines. That's all I'm doing where the doors are. Just very, very slight amount. Don't want it to be totally black where everything is. Smoke would have gathered up in these areas when they were being run behind steam trains like A4s and V2s and A3s and things like that. It would have it would have built up in these areas. Or built up in a lot of areas, but it certainly would have built up in these areas. And I'm not even keeping them all exactly the same. I'm just going some dark, some not so dark. I'm just, it's almost like trying to create a shadow. Now I'm not saying this is how you have to do it. This is just saying this is the way that I am doing it. I'm always experimenting with these things. And like I say, this was more of a challenge than anything else when it was pointed out to me that some of the newer coaches had glazing stuck in and I knew straight away that was going to cause an issue when it came down to uh, spraying. That's all I've done there. I've just put in some dark lining. I'm not going to go over that again. I might actually gather some up in some of the... in these areas here. So, so far, there's an original. Here's a one that we've been working on. And you can see there's a, a grand difference there. There's a much grand difference, but I'm not finished. Now, I could start messing around with the roof, which I'm not gonna do today. I could have changed it to a much darker color. I could go for the weathering, which I probably will do some weathering with, but I'm probably gonna go a bit lighter with something like that um, on these coaches as opposed to giving it the heavy duty really dirty roofs that I've done on that one. I'm just going to give that a little while just to go tacky and we'll move on to the next stage which I love. Uh, uh, this is really therapeutic this stuff. Now Humbrol Clear it says gloss varnish and this is this is the gloss version. I'm going to give it a little shake there. Now I was introduced to this off a video from Humbrol and there is no skill required to using this at all. It is possibly one of the most amazing things that Humbrol have put in a bottle and sell. There's, there's no skill involved at all to using it or applying it anyway. What I've got here is uh, another Humbrol brush. This is a flat brush, it's a 7mm one and from another pack that I bought and uh, I look after these ones as well but it's very soft and it's nice and flat and that's exactly what I want. This is the process and it is so easy. That's gone off because that was an enamel wash it just goes it goes really quickly. So you just dip the brush into there take off a bit of excess don't even really think about what you're doing and just brush it on. There is literally no skill level required for the using this Humbrol Clear. It is amazing stuff. You just literally plaster it on. And I've had that bottle for ages. It doesn't use an awful lot either doing this. It is in incredible gear. I used it on the uh, modifying the platforms with the brickwork of the Hornby ones. And they came out wonderful using this stuff. Absolutely great. You just literally plaster this stuff on. You don't have to put it on thick, but you just you don't have to worry about brushing a certain way and how to apply it. You only need to put one coat on as well. That's it. So I've literally just done that side. You can see the shine there, because obviously it's wet. But that's it. I don't need to return to it. I have covered 
all four sides of the coach with humble clear that's how quick it was to do and now I'm just gonna let it dry welcome back so I have got the first coach that we did here and uh, it's pretty much gone off there's a, a, a it's a little bit tacky in places the humbrol clear but it's pretty much gone off and uh well there you go now i did do the second coach you can see there that one's still not quite so off you can see the sheen in certain places where it's still quite wet I'm just going to put that to one side and let that finish all together. There you go. You've got the, the actual coach. It's it's finished. It's all done. And we're going to bring in a main range one. And you can see there now that they are incredibly close. Not exact, but they are incredibly close. And there's a Hornby six-wheeled LNER coach. Um, just to play devil's advocate a little bit here. I'm just going to move these coaches around. I would be more than happy to run those coaches together. They're not exact. They're not exactly the same, but they are very, very close now. And to give you an idea of just how far that, that has gone, I'll just put the six-wheeled one there. You can see how close they are as well. Here is one Hornby Railroad coach, and you can see the massive difference between both coaches there. It is absolutely huge. Nothing similar about that paintwork now in the sense of the shade. But I believe now that I am going to do an awful lot of them like this by hand. That is a massive difference from, from this. So it's not just limited to your Gresley Teak. You can do it with the Clerestry LNER ones, if you can pick them up. Similarly with the uh, the four-wheeled railroad LNER ones, I'm, I'm pretty sure that it would work just as well on those. I'm now just going to put the bogies back onto this coach. And just push straight back on. And you can see there, I've had no, no accidents with the roofs. If this is of any help to you, please let me know in the comments. I want to let you know exactly what we used. So during this, I used Games Workshop, Citadel Color, Shade, Seraphin, Serpia. We used the Humbrol Clear Varnish. That is incredible gear. I cannot speak more highly of this particular product. It is absolutely incredible stuff. Not, I wouldn't call it weathering, but for the emphasizing of certain parts. So I've obviously did a little bit. I used the Humbrol Black Wash. I used the Humbrol 00 detail brush and I used the Humbrol flat brush 7mm for just putting the Humbrol clear on and of course I had a couple of these handy and that's it. So this is how to make your Hornby Gresley Teaks even better. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it's been of some help to you. I hope it's given you some inspiration. If you enjoyed this video and you hadn't already seen the spray way of doing things check out the video at the top of the screen. I've put a playlist at the bottom you might like. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And also check out the Aiden's Shorts channel as well. I'll put a link there at the bottom. You can subscribe to that channel as well. Thank you, and I shall see you again soon. Bye now.